point is that he suffered this awesome just for preaching the gospel he kept preaching kept preaching kept coming back and of course a great church was started many people received the holy ghost thousands of people filled with the holy ghost in various parts of eastern europe and then all, all up into russia brother urshan came they were literally his family was slaughtered in uh, old iran or persia and they came rushing up to to russia this way and as they did the holy ghost began to fall and they had to break the ice that was a foot thick to get the people in the water they baptized 200 in the first few minutes that was after his family had died just behind him what are you saying I'm saying that that was tragic that was unbelievable but did it keep the truth from moving forward no no the truth just kept right on going they just I know it was hard it was it was very very difficult but they kept right on going now so we begin to look at when some churches, when we call it nominalism, what they mean. Are you ready? We're almost there. Everyone say, praise the Lord. Everybody look here. We're almost done. Here we go. They say, we have so many members. But that's nominal. That's the Latin word for in name only. Nominan in Latin means name. In uh, Greek, the word is Anama. So you can see that the two words are very closely related. In fact, you might be interested. It's interesting when you go different places to, to see how languages connect in certain, certain ways and they, they've got the same words for things at some, so, sometimes. Sometimes oriental languages may differ, but then there'll be places where suddenly these, these languages are converging. Nominal means that in their, their members in name only. That means they are members of that church, but they never go to it. Now, you, you say, uh, and I, okay, okay, that, I mean, that's, I, I'm not, you understand I'm not making fun, right? No, 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 we're not making fun. We're just talking a reality. They know that. They, for example, will say in a particular country, I'm not going to look at these, we could look at this as an example. For example, okay, we will, this one. All right, I went to this seminary right here. Now, I'm naming it, but I'm only naming it because, I mean, you know, I went there. The, I got these numbers from them. I didn't make these numbers up. I went to that seminary. I studied Hebrew at this seminary. Now, this is a denomination that now has lost 604,000 members in 25 years. Now, they say they now have this many millions of people, but they don't have that many people that walk into their churches. That's what I mean by apples and oranges. They're members, and we would say, yeah, they're members. But don't think that that means they go to church there. They're just members of that church. Now, now let's look at the other. Those were the apples. Let's look at the other. Apostolic numbers aren't made that way. We're only talking about the people that walk in the door. When we turn in numbers in the apostolic church, we were very careful to say, how many people actually are in your church? Not Easter Sunday. We mean actually come to your church. Did you know that there are only a handful of denominations that turn in those kind of numbers? How many are following what I'm saying? If we did the oh, the people that, you know how many people that used to be in a church and are sitting home and doing something else? We could count them. We could count their cat and their dog and their uncles. We could, I mean, yes, we could do that. But that's not what we're doing. So when we start counting and we turn numbers in to a university, we're not using nominal numbers. We're using what are known as conservative numbers. And we turn these numbers in not only to a university, but to the largest research institution in the world, World Christian Encyclopedia. Now, let's, let's go. We're going to skip the, uh, the next two because we'll get to them later. Uh, I thought I might want to use them, but we're not going to. Let's go to World Christian Encyclopedia. Now, let's look at it. Dr. Barrett, who wrote it, is the one that said there were 4 million in 82. After we sent him our research, he published the following. Is it coming up there? Okay, there it is. Well, it's, you're going to have to do something because it didn't all come up. Some of these I didn't get just right. You have to click them a second time. There it comes. Okay, now let's go past it. They saw it. Now, let's look at what he said. After he got the research, he said, you are absolutely right. There are millions more. And now here we, 
Uh, what's coming up are all the list of nominal churches, the millions of people in this group, the millions of people in that group. And so we have uh, Roman Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, Anglican, Evangelicals, Pentecostals, then Muslims, Hindus. See, this is what he does. He keeps up with all the religious people in the world, and he said there are 1.9 billion Christians and 1.2 Muslims. This is the leading researcher on religious figures in the world. Now, let's go. We're going to look at the oneness numbers. He took our research, and he said absolutely right, and he included it in his research. Now, here we go. Here's what he said. Now, these numbers are wrong because they're 10 day, years out of date. But here's... Oh, there's, wait, there's, is there not a number on that? I can't... Uh, oh, at least they said, no way. I said, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because I'm getting calls now that I've published this work. I get calls regularly. I got a call recently from a Muslim church that's in a Muslim nation that called and began to describe how their parents were murdered, how that they have to meet in secret, how they gathered and 4,000 of them received the Holy Ghost and the tears running down my face telling me how they had come into this message. And I said, listen, hey, tell me, tell me now. I want to know one thing. Where did you hear about it? I said, I've got to document this. They called me from, from this country on, on a wireless phone. And they began to give me the names and the leaders. And I said, they said, don't ever tell that. Don't ever, and I've never published it to this day. He told me how his mother was killed and his father and the tears are running. I said, okay, okay, tell me, tell me. And I said, I want to know where you heard about it I mean it was a nation where the Christianity was illegal and I thought you know they would I said I need to know it's called historical research I need to know did someone come down from some country and come in and and they acted startled and they said the reverend have you heard of the Bible and I said uh well, yes, I've, I've heard of that. Uh, well, that's how. We, we don't know any other Christians. We, we didn't know. We made contact afterwards, and, and we found out, and then we heard about you, and we we're contacting you. I want to tell you something, folks. How many knows that God's truth is marching on? God's truth is marching on. It is moving forward. Now, we just, in the last six months, did the current documentation, which now is over 600 oneness organizations. How many see that that's almost doubled from just five years ago? Now, that doesn't mean that's how many more groups there are. That means that's how many more I've been able to discover and document and research. Well, I'm now convinced that there are probably twice that many, but I don't know. Not that, that is truly guessing. These numbers, these are what I'm calling hard numbers. I can walk into any university and lay the research down and say, there it is. There's the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. There's their numbers right there. There's where their churches are. That's which states they're in. That's how many countries they're in. Right there. 600 groups. 24.2 million in hard numbers. So now the university is saying, if you can document almost 25 million, that means you couldn't possibly document every single Jesus name person living. I said, there are countries I haven't even begun the study. For example, they wanted to know, were there any Jesus name churches in England? I said, I don't know. I know the United Pentecostal Church is there, but I'll start doing the research. So I contacted the University of Bern, who then contacted me and sent me researchers from the University of Germany and Switzerland and England. And there was a Lutheran scholar that was so fascinated that the oneness movement was growing so fast in England. They sent me her dissertation. It was two volumes. Each of them were this thick, in which she documented 42 oneness organizations in the nation of England alone. 
So then we said, well, how many are in Ireland? We have yet to find a place where they are not people filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and preached.